Hello, welcome back now to the Brighton Music Conference. I'm Ben Rush and uh, I'm going to be doing a panel here uh, about the music mission. Um, so um, first of all, we're just going to quickly introduce the rest of uh, the panel here. So if you'd like to start down at end. Hi, I'm Paul Ridney, a DJ across Europe for Cafe Mambo in Ibiza, also a resident there. Uh, release music on multitude of labels. Uh, at the moment, Let There Be House, New State, Glasgow Underground, previously Tour Room Defected, uh, Size, lots of labels. That's me. Hello, Simon Berkhamshaw here from Labelworks, one of the senior members, uh, also producer, DJ, uh, various other hats within the music industry, been involved for about six years now, uh, and it's a pleasure to be here today. Hello, uh, my name's Jay. I go by the stage name of Kovu. I'm the uh, product manager and co-founder of South Point, a local label here in Brighton, focusing on underground dance music um, in general. Um, I run the breakfast show over on Trickstar Radio, which is um, a radio station in Brighton, essentially focusing on underground music. And I handle the podcast and reviews for Juno Download. So. And um, there's been a lot of quick changes sort of going along uh, to uh, sort of make this all happen. So I have to thank Jay for coming literally straight from that uh, show. Was, so was appreciate sprint. that. It was worth the sprint. <laughs> so, um, yeah, well, we want to cover um, quite a few bits and pieces, though, this morning. Um, and then we want to go into a, sort of a discussion really about what is the future um, in this aspect. So the music mission, um, in case uh, those sort of missed it, um, it's actually been a partnership with um, Audiolot and Labelworks as well. Um, and uh, this was um, really to try and resolve something that um, had been aware to us for some time and we couldn't actually do anything in uh, Audiolock, um, which I'm the founder of. But the, um, So back in 2017, uh, it was something that we were picking up then and uh, it was a sort of growing problem. And what this is, is um, piracy in a very different way. Is this piracy where there's no free? So this is download stores, essentially, but illegal ones. Um, and now these really manifest themselves rather than sort of your track source, Beatport and uh, Juno, um, where uh, you're paying sort of per download. These are ones which are done on very much more the Netflix model. So you're paying a monthly subscription and you can usually sort of consume as much as you like, really. There are some uh, sort of changes there and they do limit it in certain ways. Um, and we're not talking here as well about those who are really cutting the prices right down and offering it ridiculously cheap. You know, the sort of average price here is around sort of $45 a month. So a significant amount of money that's actually being paid um, for the consumption of um, downloads still. Um, and we'll go a little bit uh, more later into sort of why downloads are so important still, and it is a sort of hidden area of revenue. But what the Music Mission uh, was set up to do was to try and tackle these. Um, and so initially, we uh, sort of looked into this, and uh, we're talking here when we talk about legitimate stores, very much about uh, TrackSource, Beatport, and Juno Download here being the sort of the, the largest sort of um, part of it. So we thought, yeah, legitimate stores, and we've got these pirate stores there. But we wanted to try and quantify it and actually decide, you know, work out how big this was. So what we looked at doing was actually just um, to initially measure some traffic um, and we do this using uh, so industry accepted um, tools like SimilarWeb and Alexa to try and get some kind of idea an estimation of traffic and what we found was legit legitimate stores are getting about 9 million visits a month whereas the pirate stores are getting about 11 million so that was quite crazy to start with and I think you know that makes people feel quite annoyed <laughs> in certain ways. Um, it gets a bit more scary though because um, here's an example of one here and we're looking on similar web and as you can see nada there's no information about it at all no data whatsoever so that's not a domain that we could actually look at and count the traffic of okay um, so that is missing it might be big but we don't know it just literally isn't in their data set now the scary bit is that accounting for 70% of it. So there's a 70% hole in our data straight away. So that initial uh, 9 million and 11 million, this could be a hell of a lot bigger. We just literally do not know. So it could be a massive um, sort of problem there, but it is a sizable problem anyway. And especially, you know, there is no free option on these sites whatsoever. So what do they look like? Um, now, we haven't really been really revealing names of these sites uh, for very obvious reasons. We've been doing this consistently. Well, yeah, 100% of our time has been going into this since uh, March. Um, and uh, you can see here, this is uh, one of the sites. Um, now, this is an important one. Um, I mean, it, you know, you've got DJ charts and stuff, you've got feature releases, um, and, you know, they have quite often got some fantastic um, editorial and things as well. But it's that little bit on the very top 
edge there, the private access, and that's where you go in and you start paying your monthly subscription to access it all. And you're downloading FLAX and WAV files and things as well. Now, whether they originally were those or have been trans, you know, sort of uh, transcoded or whatever, we don't know um, at the time. But this one here is um, an important one because um, this is where you pay the money. Um, and uh, if you actually try and go and find this yourself and go into um, the internet, you'll find you get that. So that looks like a dead site. Something's wrong, not working, yeah? But it's not. That's what's there. It's hidden. So it hides and it uh, allows traffic in through certain routes. Um, and now what's important with these routes is actually they're satellite sites. So huge numbers of sites, they all look very different and uh, they have all the releases up there. And then you click to go through and actually it looks like a legitimate place to go and buy it. You click to go and uh, sort of buy it and it takes you through to somewhere like this. And there's a lot of these. This is the thing, we're talking um, 200 odd domains roughly that are active. Um, and uh, we're pleased to announce as well that through the work that the Music Mission has been doing with um, over a thousand supporters now. So there's a thousand businesses who have come on and registered and um, given us um, the uh, ability to use their content to work within the, uh, the whole project. Um, we've actually got um, 45 of them um, actually died now and are now consigned history, which we're very pleased about. And literally, they are going off every day. So it's, we've got some really big action that's happening right at the moment. Uh, we had a couple of domains that go off yesterday. We've had uh, people trying to hide and uh, <laughs> from us all the time. Now, what difference is actually making? Now, you can't probably see very easily, but I'll try and explain this. So what we've got here is uh, chart position. So this is um, position one, obviously where you want to get to in charts. This is up to 100 here. Okay, this is just looking at Beatport in this, um, uh, the Beatport charts. Now, what you've got then is any sort of uh, line that's heading up that way, that's going up out the chart, okay? Now, you can see here, they're all kind of got a little curve going that way, and then they come back. Now, what happened here was we actually did delisting. So we actually, for um, uh, it's about 300,000 odd releases um, that we've been uh, given the ability to be agents for uh, and actually do delisting from uh, search uh, for that. And we've got in, in all just under a million uh, unique links to delist in total from, uh, that's just from Google. So um, you can actually see here that it comes back in. So things are kicking back up. So now that's really interesting because if you consider these still, the trajectory going off here, the difference between there and where it's actually now got to, that's the difference, or certainly in, at least in part, that these pirate download stores were having. So they're still having a bigger effect than that, but you can see that it's an effect that's going on the whole time. It has been going on, in some cases, for nearly 10 years, these sites. You know, it's insane. So when, you know, people were saying about the, uh, the downloads dying and things, actually, that's not entirely true. A lot of it was going behind the scenes um, and sort of behind the curtain and hiding. So, you know, this is an area that we should definitely be considering, and there is clearly revenue that is to be had here. So um, what difference does it make in terms of search results and things as well? So this is a, a current release, um, and uh, it's one of the defectors here in uh, this case. And you can see that's kind of what you want. Top of search results, you've got your SoundCloud, track source, Amazon, and then you've got uh, one of the official links there as well. Um, and what happened to achieve this is uh, all these were removed. So you can see there, this is um, this was removed on the 27th. And all of these were taken out of there. These, every single one of these is one of the domains that we're talking about. These are all domains which are charging for access to the content. Not free. They're all charging for access to it. And there's 200 of these things. <laughs> so you get an idea of just how big um, you know, the whole um, area is. So what I'd like to um, sort of talk about is, you know, things are happening there uh, very fast at the moment. We've still got a whole load of uh, links to be delisted, um, but we are seeing the changes happening very quickly. Um, we're getting labels reporting back to us that they are seeing the difference as well. Um, and why downloads are important from uh, an income point of view is, of course, the stream uh, model means that, yeah, you might get the same uh, money coming back, but it's over the lifetime. And um, when you're out of pocket for your mastering and marketing and all that sort of thing right now, you kind of want to fill that. <laughs> you don't want to wait all that time for it, otherwise you end up feeling like a bank and you're at the losing end of it all. So um, with the downloads, obviously you're getting the money up front because it's you know at the point of sale, uh, and that money can then come through very, very quickly through the distributors. And working with Label Works as well, we did a, another um, uh, campaign through the whole COVID um, sort of situation as well, where um, we were actually getting it down to one month from the point of it actually being sold on one of the download stores to the money coming through. So you know that's uh, fantastic from that point of view there. So, you know, to start things off, we've got the whole the size of this thing. It is a big problem. Um, and, I mean, it'd be good to have a little chat with Paul to hear what you think of it in terms of, 
you know, because you're a bit long in the tooth like me, is that uh, it's talking about the history of it, really, because you, you were, um, you know, making releases through the period when downloads seemed to be declining and dying off. So what was your perception? Uh, well, it's, it's changed totally in the sense that uh, it was all downloads and then it became all streaming, essentially. I mean, yeah. I, I'm Why was that, do you think? When? Why? 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 Um, yeah, I just, I just think it, people want to stream more. I mean, Spotify is, it's so easy now. It's in your hand. It's, it's the desktop app. It's, it's on your mobile phone. I really resisted Spotify. I, I didn't think it was, everyone's going to be screaming, going, what are you talking about? Looking at it from a DJ point of view, I kind of went, no, no, I'm going to stay true to DJing and all that kind of thing. But I'll be honest with you, I, I get it now. I really get it. And I get it when there are dance records with billions of streams or very close, you know, and you suddenly realize what that could be financially if you do the quick, you know, math on it. Um, so, yeah, I get why streaming's changed and I also get the fact that my mobile phone's in my pocket and I can listen to anything on demand with Spotify Premium and no ads, I, I get that. Um, and I use it. Because your point it. of view, yeah, consumer point of view is fantastic. Uh, the, but the um, very much a drive at the time was that um, pr prior to the streaming side, um, with the downloads there, everyone was seeing free downloads appearing in search engines, and that you know piracy was a big problem. They were having to fight it all the time. Yeah. And let's face it, it's not. It's quite a techie thing, and it's not really something that when you get into music that you got in your head. That's what I want to be doing day to day. And in you know, it's about the music and you yeah, know, of the course it is. It's very different. Of course from it is. It. You, you want to make records. Yeah. You want to make records you want to get them on the store so traditionally for me track source beatport and you wanted to get your new record straight into dj's hands i mean that might be very naive but traditionally that's that's what i wanted to do make a record get it sounding as good as possible mastering everything else get the product great and get it serviced to djs but as a you know seeing them free download on lots and lots of sites though that's the thing that was getting all of the xx you know in the, yeah in the and soul de soul destroying yeah, for an artist totally. completely, completely and so you know that sour taste in the mouth and pocket you know the uh, when streaming came along it was that everyone was like yeah let's go for streaming it's the answer to piracy piracy now will no longer exist um and so a lot of people leapt towards that now in a lot of other uh, genres, that does kind of work. But, you know, in the way that you were saying you wanted to stay true to sort of the DJing side. Now, um, it's a very aspirational thing. People want to be DJs. Yeah, that's it. They, they see that. Now, they don't want to be the DJ who just sort of just does it in a bedroom and sort of or the streaming thing like that. They always aspire to, you know, it being a festival DJ, someone like that, where there isn't Wi-Fi. You know, and this, this is the reason that people buy the top end Pioneer kit and they're never going to play anywhere other than their bedroom. You know, it's they aspire to things. and It is an emotive thing there. So um, with that, um, sort of uh, known, then it means that actually the downloads are going to be the same. That they want to have the downloads because that's the way it's done. You know, that's um, the same thing. So that helps perpetuate that side. So it is always going to be there. And these um, uh, the pirate sites, they very much came up and uh, produced some fantastic. Um, online sort of properties that, you know, deliver a great user experience as well. I mean, you've got to be said, it's a shame that a pirate, a lot of them. Um, but, um, you know, and they were coming out very much a time that people were saying downloads are dead. And it was they, literally people were moving into these because you've already seen that the majority of those sites don't appear in the industry use statistics. So it means all your reports by IFPI and people like that, the global ones, don't include any of that. So they don't see the problem because to them it doesn't exist. Yeah. So um, so here we have, yeah, everyone sort of was looking at yeah, streaming. But what we're seeing and showing here is that there is a big pot of money here, which is being taken by someone else. It's being paid at the moment by people who want to pay it for the music, but it's going the wrong place. So this is what we're correcting. And um, this is what requires everyone working together to make this all happen. Couldn't be even more important now, Ben, with, uh, with no gigs and, and uh, yeah. Exactly. Well, we accelerated this project to specifically try and you know answer that as well because we were doing it anyway, but literally yanked it up by sort of two months, which has um, made me a lot more grey hair. But um, <laughs> and it's been hard work, really hard work. So you go to such effort as you've seen to hide, um, and uh, yeah, it has been difficult. I mean, it's um, uh, 19 million unique links we have crawled across all of these sites. I mean, they're epically sized as well. So um, you know, in terms of um, uh, what you know this revenue that people, you know, it's there and labels aren't taking advantage of it at the moment, all right? So, you know, what would it mean? So in a label sense, you know, actually suddenly, let's say, having uh, your download uh, revenues, say, doubling or something like that, what would that actually mean in a label in terms of not just the in revenue, great, but security the and what you should strategically be doing? You know, what, what would change? 
Right, okay. I think personally... It's quite a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, a lot big of question. Big question. <laughs> big question. No pressure. Why? Um, the first thing I feel labels need to realise is, especially with you know a lot of brands, I guess is the way to look at it now, you're building a brand, so your events, a lot of big uh, brands use their live as an income, but now it's very much a case of you need to be squeezing every penny from every corner. So this is just another area that's going to boost your revenue. Streaming isn't necessarily taking over, but it, what it is now in my eyes and what a lot of us, you know, Labour Works and various other distributors and hopefully people in the industry are seeing is that it's streaming is one source, download is another, you have, you know, live is another sector. This is obviously a very important part of the... Uh, you know the area where it can make, as you can see from the some, from the stats up on the screen, like it's some big, big chunk of money that you're missing. You account late like, with your publishing and all the other areas in your your 360 business model if you're building your brand and and business like that. So, I think for labels to really realise that you know a lot of people are shifting their attitude towards now streaming and they're like, oh, this is where it needs to be out. I need to be in a playlist. I need to be this. But at the end of the day, like. The knock-on effect is you get in a chart, you shout about on your social media about you're in the charts. You shout about, hey, you know, I've been featured here, this DJ's charted my music and so on. And then that is a knock-on effect. If you can't see you're getting results from the download, you don't know if people are buying your music. It's very hard to see real time. You can't watch someone seeing, you can't really watch someone right at the moment listening to your music. I mean, Spotify do give you a lot of these analytics and so on, and, and as with the other stores, but there's nothing better than seeing your tracks in the charts. And I think if it's so decimate that you can't see these sales, then realistically, how are you to know? So as soon as you get this back, this percentage, you're going to see a big boost, which therefore gives you something to shout about. And again, it's a knock-on kind of effect. So I think that's quite an important thing to realise yeah. where that kind of comes into the other bigger... Now, so we've only, you know, as a music mission, we can only work with content that we've been authorised to do so. So we've, you know, we had um, these sort of thousand odd um, businesses, uh, you know, most of them are sort of labels, label houses, um, uh, have allowed us to then use the content act, act as an agent to do delisting and therefore see effect of it. But of course, it's industry wide. So um, there's plenty of things that you can be doing to actually make this happen yourselves. Um, and it really is sort of, um, you know, looking at um, search particularly, um, you know, search is a huge place of discovery of music. And, you know, this is Google. You've got the various sort of YouTube ones at the top there. Otherwise, this is result one here. Now, this sort of page one of Google, just to give you a sort of indicator, um, it's considered about sort of three to five percent of people go to page two. So if you're not on page one, then you've ruined it, really. You, l you lose all that traffic. Now, there's so many of these stores that they were pretty much taking up the whole of page one. So that traffic that falls on these links was not going to defected before, and it is now. So that has a knock-on as well, because it's then lifting things like your social media stats and all that sort of side as well, you know, merch and anything else that you're pushing onto. Now, and I'm glad you mentioned brand, right? This is really important, brand stuff, because um, these sites as well, they when people fall onto them, instead of being onto the ones that you control, it means you no longer control that brand. You no longer control music discovery or anything else, which is how you then actually generate more revenue from the same individuals who, are, you know, got an emotive connection with your brand. So, you know, it is so important to... You know, know look after things like search and actually make sure it is showing the right things here now it isn't easy understanding which sites are the good and bad ones you'd be amazed when we do searches across social media just how many artists and labels are going yeah our release is out you can get it on track source beatport juno and then musby and then sound the only like oh my god there are two of those are pirate sites you know and yeah you pay for it but you're also not getting anything out of it so, you know, you should not be promoting pirates. Right? But if they don't know, they're professionals here and they've been doing it a long time. People are doing that. Yeah, a lot. A surprising mm. number. Yeah. Um, and these, um, you know, we've, we've been doing a huge amount of forensic work as well behind the scenes on these individual sites. Um, and they work in networks. So, you know, you have one core site that takes the money, like um, this one that we uh, sort of looked at here. And then around it, you might have 20, 30 sites all feeding into it. So they, are, they have a large traffic and a large audience. So, um, you know, they are um, problematic, but usually run by individuals or a very small number of individuals. And some of those individuals that we're locating sort of for these sites actually work in the industry as well. And so they have record labels. And you're like literally biting the hand that feeds you. And it's, you know, it's so damaging. Um, and, you know, music has such a big problem because of streaming things as well in terms of its value. People see it as a very low value commodity when they're paying for it. And we should not be devaluing the very thing that we're trying to make a, a living off. 
and you know it's it's worth what it is to you in an emotional sense not monetary and so you know we've got to keep pushing that back up really and so these sites that are doing this um it's you know it is criminal in it and it's um you know the music mission is uh, all this evidence and uh, forensic data that we've got um is being all packaged up and passed on to um the relevant um sort of associations and authorities to sort of deal with as well because this needs stopping and you know we've already got 45 down out of um, sort of an active sort of 200 um, and that is going further and further we get more momentum on it so that's 45 stores that have come down in in what time period um well those ones that have come down in the past sort of couple of months really um but it's, it's since um, we started the music mission side because we've got all the um you know so many supporters as well big part of it was the website and all the public aspect of it because it's kind of like if they know we're coming because this whole area has been sort of pretty much untouched a lot of it for the whole time um just just to ask on that can you directly see how much kind of each site is kind of affecting revenue like can you see how much uh, is there any way of checking like how many downloads are going through the the more pirate sites um not directly like that i mean that's where so that's where for example here what we're looking at is well in theory we've done several because it's trying to get an average of it because if you've got something that's going off out of the chart and then it turns around and comes back in that's kind of irregular anyway but then you go it's irregular very much we've got loads of them all doing it on the same day um and so if you've got something that you're going to expect to be up here and it's then sort of a position one, well, if that was a position 100 and position one, well, it's affecting them by about 100, 100 positions on there. So, again, it's trying to quantify so that, so there what is difference like very, is. There's very like direct evidence of this, which does kind of say, I think something just to point out as well, I think there will be a lot of very intrigued um, independent record labels that have seen that sort of that 9 mil and that 11 mil when those figures have popped up there I'm, I'm assuming for me that's the first time I've seen those those figures same it's exactly the same so like to see how big a chunk it is it's, a, it's over thank double thank you support and following yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry um, but because it's over double of what the actual um, revenue is I think there are going to be a lot of uh, smaller labels out there um, kind of ourselves included with that, that are looking at that and going, well, we, we know what we can roughly get off digital downloads. We've got a rough idea of what we can expect from it. Um, and obviously shift, and we're uh, us like a lot of labels are shifting towards streaming as being the main sort of platform. But when you see that and go, hang on, we're, not, we're, we're tapping into about half of what we should be tapping into here. Um, and when the actual figures for a lot of dance music labels specifically are still very much um, in that sort of, thir- like sort, of, sort of 60, 40, 30, 70%, there's still like a notable... Um, you can still sort of see there's a way of the figures kind of leveling out. So if you then kind of go actually double, we could be making double our, our revenue here. It actually kind of goes, they are they could be bang on 50-50 either way. So it's, as you said, it's interesting to kind of go, they are separate streams. They're not necessarily the be all and end all. One isn't the be all and end all. Another isn't the be all and end all. So to kind of go, especially in the current times where we are going, we need to squeeze as much out of it as we possibly can. I think it's, it's to see how much it's, is being affected and as you said like it's not as if the downloads aren't happening because people are paying for the sites and i think a lot of people kind of have that assumption of people are going to free download sites and not paying anything and that kind of makes then i can understand the mindset behind that like i don't want to pay for yeah it, it was there we go. Why, how can we fight against free that was yeah, the very that, much that, that the, was, the reason that, was, that people that, didn't like dealing was, with it that yeah. was the entire thing i remember as well and as, as labels we get people sending like stuff through like are oh, you on this you, you, your tune, your tracks have been uploaded to this do you want to report it you're on that you do you want to do you want to report it and we're kind of like oh it's free so yeah of course we want to we want to report it but then we see like literally stuff like this where people are actually paying essentially for what i presume is almost a spotify style system of like a netflix style system as you said but for the downloads it it's kind of crazy that it's like why why wouldn't you just put that into the into the right place you know i mean essentially they're paying it here rather than putting it into beatport you know or someone like that so it's it's, you know it's getting capturing those revenues and it's like yeah i mean a lot we did find we did a lot of uh, analysis of things like sentiment and things of people talking um uh, through sort of forums and things about this and looking at the boards the, the people are talking about you know where to you know where's DJ should be getting your music and a lot of people are going to these sites and not even realizing they're pirate because you know they do actually hide it quite well a lot of them and it's um it, you know there's a significant traffic going through it um and they're very good at this. they have been doing it a long time you know some of these sites really have been going for like 10 years I mean, it's insane and they've just been sitting there, but because of the complexity of dealing with them, and trust me, I really know about the complexity of it now. The um, you know, that, that's why it hasn't been tackled. And you know, the dance music side doesn't always perhaps get the attention that you know it should in the industry. And partly, um, it's because it is a little bit quirky in that we have so many releases going through so fast. There's no other part of the industry which is like that. Um, and that's unfortunately also why the uh, it's picked on by the pirates for a whole range of different things. I got. A- 
Can I jump in, sir? Go I've got a couple of questions. So, like, when when the trend has changed that you've seen there, you've seen multiple tracks increase. Well, these are all different releases. Every single one of these releases is um, it's all the same date dates and things. So, yeah. Um, they're all changing, and these are all releases that um, uh, 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 part of our sort of clients, or well, no, not clients, the supporters' content. So sure. these are ones that you, what you can directly link to being on those other sites, essentially. Yeah. So okay. these, and we've cleaned them up. And then if we um, took a snapshot of ones that uh, aren't in the, um, you know, anything we've been doing the delisting or anything mm. on, you don't get this. You know, that's why I've shown, you know, several on here. I mean, there's loads, so I've kind of cut it down to just a smaller number, because um, you've got to try and look for, you know, a, a sort of trend of it because individual ones every single track is different or every release so it, you know it isn't there but if you actually um look at it across right we took around you know took this lot in a random say in other sample you'll see it doesn't exist in that it only exists in this one yeah so, so it's happening yeah. well, the other question i had really quickly is what you're showing on screen is 44 45 stores see you later right yeah, so uh, um, well, those are domains as well. Domains, so this is sorry. It gets kind of complicated because they're not individual sites, they're networks. Sometimes they are a whole site, sometimes it's... So part. you're going for 200 domains, is that what you're saying? That's right, yeah. And what time frame do you expect to get to 200? Well, uh, hopefully very quickly now uh, because we've done a huge amount. The majority of the work we've actually already done now because um, I say we've been doing this since March and it's um, yeah quite uh, a tiring task. But um, with all the supporters involved as well, um, they've been fantastic. And it's um, literally what we've got going on now is we've got the delisting. So it's um, about halfway through that. Um, and so the next couple of days, that will sort of complete. And so we'll get a really big effect from that. Um, and we're looking to, we're measuring all sorts of aspects to appear to actually correlate it as best we can to um, sort of see that. Because if we can prove the, the value here as well, it means then that people actually will take note of this and go, actually, you know, it's, as you're saying, it's different revenue streams. It's like, well, don't just put all your eggs in one basket with streaming. Actually, there is a lot more here than you thought there was. And it's been hidden from you and someone else is taking it. And it is ripe for the picking, you know. I was going to say, I think it is important to alliterate the value of your content as well, to the point that, obviously, from the analytics you've seen, the profile level of the releases, is it potentially more underground labels or is it across the board or are you seeing more of the it bigger brands everyone. on there? No, no, it literally affects all. I mean, you've got here like your defectors and things, but then you've also got much smaller um, uh, labels with their releases coming through. There, there is no difference as we're seeing. All it. right, that's a good, that's a good that's question. A, that's so it's just as important because to this, the, yeah. your green your grassroots as well the as... Yeah. I, I think potentially some of the people potentially watching or listening would think... Oh well, it doesn't cover for me because my label's so small. I'm under the radar. It's all the big guys that probably get it. So I think, I think it's it important to it. That's at that point, you know. Of course, you oh yeah, it's a yeah. difference, but isn't it? Well, no. But different it's mindsets exactly for right. different but labels. There's, pennies, really, there's different yeah. mindsets for different labels, I guess. You know, the bigger machines at work in our industry or in our sector of the industry, I guess. You know, there's a different business model to a bedroom label setup. You know, they the, the revenue that comes through potentially is probably very small anyway. So they're not that could be such a small amount. Of course, it's still very important and it's a global community effort to try and shut this down because everyone's a winner at the end of it, I guess, is the important thing. So, And it's only by everyone coming together. I mean, this is a really important part of it. It's the reason that we um, could never sort of actually shut these down ourselves as audio lot for clients is you have a client coming along with their content and even if it's a defected or something like that, still it's a small portion across the whole of the site and um, we just can't work that because we need you know a sort of a weight as a bigger portion to be able to tackle it um and um so to do that we've got all these um supporters all part of it and right now um they're being directed sent um uh, communications to send out to um, hosts and payment gateways but also any other services that are supporting these um, pirate stores so it could be like um, you know content, uh, sort of customer relationship management database and things that you hook in and all sorts of things. So they're sending notes now and we're actually getting really fast movement on that. So literally, um, you I mean know, this is six months by probably, next week, so. you know, I think we're going to see you know, a huge movement, a number of sites going. And once the sort of balls are sort of rolling there and, um, you know, we've got more press online about what's happening is these site operators, you know, the it used to be that as soon as you go to another country, you're kind of safe. Um, whereas that's not the case now, you know, across the whole of Europe, for example, there's, um, much better legal structure um, for actually dealing with these. You just search in Google for, you know, like sort of site operators and um, sort of music, and you'll see so many cases of people who have got jail terms out of this. Um, and it's like, well, do you want a jail term or, you know, is it really worth the risk? 
And so now the attention is on this and people can see we're not going away. You know, there's all these supporters, they're pissed, you know, and rightly so about this. So, you know, if they're all actively behind it and we keep pushing that message out there that this isn't acceptable, we're not having it, then that comes back. You know, we actually bring that back to us and recover what is actually rightfully for the rights holders themselves. I think the exciting part of that as well, just from, from what's being said, is that it allows labels to invest more back into artists and and do all the things. Especially, that, especially at the moment. Yeah, though. exactly. Especially That's my brain. Home, is just, is yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking in the situation we're in, it's a positive message because you think more artists, you know, more great creativity within the industry. We, we need that. We really, really need that. And so. it's almost like it's it's one that's kind of been there the entire time, but it's almost been a little bit forlorn, somewhat been a little bit forgotten about by, by the way things seem to shift. And it seems like everything is pushed towards um, essentially streaming or Spotify. And that seems to be what it is. But this has been there it's by the looks of things the whole time. Yeah. And it, it's kind of mad, like the kind of audacity to an extent of a lot of these sites to kind of go, w pay for it. None of it's going to them. Pay for it and we'll, we'll have it all. There's, like, there's a real level of audacity to that. You can imagine them just laughing. Well, it's just like, well, let's stop that. You know, it's I still think there's a lot of labels that you'll be well speaking to many labels day on a daily basis of how many are still in a very download mindset, even though we've shifted. Even labels that I thought they'd be very on the pulse, they're still in that download fit and it still is a big chunk of their Why do you think revenue. that is, so? I guess a lot True, of trueness lot to the to the True, DJ I model I or potentially because some of these brands do events and if you're there's always been that sort of you know if you get high in the charts on the beat port tracks or wherever it means you know the more you're charting the more presence you've got the promoters are going to look at you and they'll book you so I think there's always been that mentality but I've spoke to various artists of a fairly you know established profiles and they're like oh it's all about streaming I think promoters are looking at us now we need to be thinking about our fit but that doesn't mean it's like, I'll oh, drop that, go to this. It's just, it's another thing you've got to consider. You've got to have this you've strategy, have this strategy, this and this it. strategy, and they've all got to work together. And I think little things tweak, just tightening up screws in all the areas and making sure you're working as, a, as, as clever as you can. So we're saying getting a house in order, and it yeah. is about the efficiency of it, and that's why brand is so important as well. You know, it sounds like a very corporate thing, but literally it means if you get brand right, and you actually are working it properly, every single minute you spend on the label or pushing anything goes that much further without you doing anything I extra. I do, yeah. Literally out doing anything extra. So I kind of feel... <laughs> I'm probably going to get shot down for this, but I do feel record, label, record labels are not a thing of the past because it's not true, but the perception of a record label is not what it used to be because it is about a brand. If you look at all of the big events and everything, they're brands, but they've got the record label. The record label is just a part of the big machine. Um, and I think a lot of people need to shift their mindsets a little bit to think that you're building your brand, your identity, your colour scheme, your font, font type, like all of these things. All it's kind of a corporate mentality, but you don't have to treat it as so serious. You you're just picking have fun the best with it. bits. You've from got the way what it's you like everybody. Yeah. What do you stand for? That's basically what you're doing. And well, I think it, it's but the in brand that though, you have um, in the corporate world you have a thing called brand personality. Not a lot of people sort of know well, this. That, that's what people buy into, isn't it? That's yeah, what that's it, what people that's see what and trust and go yeah. back yeah. to every time. E even back in the day with yeah. buying yeah. vinyls, yeah. you went you, you know yeah. you see you see that logo on the middle exactly. of the vinyl, you're probably gonna try it out. That's like Ben with his positiva t shirt on, you know what I mean? You saw that in you saw that in a record shop, boom, you're in, weren't you? Great tune. But yeah, I mean what was I gonna ask? Um how many labels at the moment are you representing with this? Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. It's uh, it's a large number. Uh, so I think it's about two and something thousand. What I'm thinking is, are there people watching who run labels that think I'm not a part of this? Yeah, huge number of people. Um, and so, um, you know, to them, the first thing you can do is go to the Music Mission website and um, just register on there because then we send out communications of the next things that are going to be happening um, and the developments of it. And, you know, like we've done this, um, you know, we've got a million links just under that, um, you know, we're sending for D-list and that's all entirely free or anything. This is it. We've literally been putting in to make this happen. Um, and, um, yeah, it's been hard work, but... You know, we see that you know the responses we're getting from people are fantastic in terms of what's happening for them, and you know it's they've all, so many people coming with stories that they've tried to do things themselves and just been like oh, literally getting nowhere. But it takes getting it all together. Oh, I'm so that dude, <laughs> <laughs> what you've got to think about. It. So I mean, in, in terms of like a web host who's you know le uh, leases a server to a pirate site, yeah. Now they say you know say it's two hundred dollars a month or something, and they're making forty fifty dollars a margin on that. Now um, you know one person sending something in, all they've got to do is they just give it to the the client, the person who's actually renting it. They just pass on one of these notices. So 
not very much friction there, right? But if they're then getting from 200 labels, they're getting a notice from all of them and they're having to read and process every single one. It doesn't come much before you think that $40 does not go very bloody far. You know, this is not worth it. Bye bye. Um, and that's the difference in making. Literally, that is what is happening right now. Um, and it is having huge success. And we need more and more people to get in there to actually make it happen quicker. But also, sort of term of scorching the earth you know properly it ain't coming back we're getting rid of this properly now and that's gone and um you know literally we will find these revenues they are just getting mopped up and all coming back in stream now and um you know it's very hard over this whole period of um sort of change to sort of measure things like the um actual income because it's always relative to other things but you know there have been um when we've had big sort of um uh, sort of bits going on publicly as well and movements to it, it seems to have changed a bit of the attitude of actually, you know, we should be thinking about this and actually not going to these sites and actually do have a moment. I mean, on the, the Music Mission site, there's a, um, there's a uh, sort of survey you can do on there where it's just a whole um, load of web shots of different sites. And it's like, try and guess the actual legitimate and pirate ones. And um, on average, no one gets it right. <laughs> so it's, uh, no, by miss quite a lot, including myself. So it's um, it is hard, um, very hard. That's frightening, one, though, isn't that it? Is, that is terrible. Because uh, just being a hundred percent honest, the one we looked at earlier, I've seen that that pop up a fair few times. And obviously, when you sign up for a distribution network or something like that, um, from a record label perspective, they'll give you this big list of like all these different ones. And off the top of your head, realistically, you're not going to remember every single one. They change domains so yeah, and, fast, and, and, as and that's well. the thing. You're not going to remember which ones. Um, just off the top of your head, we're talking here. You don't know when a new store will have will have opened. You don't know when um, certain certain ones may actually be, as you say, pirates from behind the scenes. Um, one thing I was going to ask, um, just while, while, <laughs> I've got, while I'm talking, um, is in regards to smaller labels getting involved. Um, what is the the kind of process behind that? Obviously, you said signing up, but is there like a lot of additional work from a sort of admin sort of side? Because as, as everyone knows at the moment, everyone's very stretched trying to do all this additional squeezing. I hear, so, yeah. so, yeah. so like from a, a smaller record label perspective, like how much would it take to kind of get involved with this and it be genuinely beneficial? Well, we made tools to try and make this really easy so that basically, yeah, you just sign up and uh, one of the ones we did for the delisting, and all you had to do is tell us which labels are yours. Now, it sounds easier than it um, sometimes is. So we literally had a thing we start just typing in the label and it will go, yeah, here are the variations across all of the download stores of releases. You go, well, that's ours, 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 done. Right, that's that lot. And so even for, you know, large... Um, uh, sort of uh, house of brand kind of uh, record labels, it was still easy for them to do that. Um, now, that actually brings us on to a subject as well. In terms of um, maximizing your revenue, this is what we were discussing a little bit outside. It is the sexy world of metadata. Um, it's, um, I mean, it, the people talk about metadata and the importance of it, but I can tell you actually how important it is. Um, where we were looking across um, all of the releases, this is literally every single track and release across Juno, Beatport, and um, uh, Track Source as well. We looked all that we've literally got our databases have the whole lot in there and it's continuously synced up so we've got all of that and then we've got all the um uh, labels that we were told that you know they're letting us use their content so actually then matching those and actually trying to find it all uh, connect together cross-referencing them oh my god there's you know it's just under about 20 percent of it is in an area that i would not expect you know majority of um, people trying to actually match it and we've got um, we actually built a, a tool specifically to um, tackle some of this here using AI to do it um, and um, you know we're a very tech sort of heavy um, kind of uh, outfit now why this is important if there's any op every any moment that someone has a bit of money and they need to pay it to you for that track or that release okay then they've got to match those together to make that actually happen so matching it is a bit of a nightmare um it turns out so say just under like 20 percent of it we were going that is a really gray lot that would be very tough for the majority of people to be dealing with so you got like a prs and people like that who are assigning royalties if that isn't easy you ain't getting the money you know literally it's like that or paul's getting the money but it should have gone to you but you've got both got releases called stupidly the same kind of thing. Like, I don't know, various artists, Ibiza. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, you'd be surprised how hard it is to match that when there's like 20 versions. I was, it, when we were sat outside talking about it, uh, you know, Ben kindly pointed to the fact that I've named records the same as other people have, which, you know, I guess in the world of it metadata, happens. as an artist, you go, oh, I'm going to call it this, you know. But from a metadata point of view, I guess, it, you know, if it's not... 
absolutely bang on, there's a chance, I guess, stuff gets lost. Do you you don't consider that as an artist the, whatsoever. You I mean, know. There you're sitting sort of coming up with a name. and it's, it's an art thing at the time, isn't it? You know, it's a motive. You're thinking about it. You're in Well, it's going off to a label and they're saying, what are you going to call it? And you think, quick, 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 quick something. <laughs> a beat or something. Oh, no. Um, so it is really important. And there is, just to reiterate, there is no ID sort of basis for, you know, identifying music at all. You've got ISRC, right? Actually, that's useless for a lot of this. Cat ID. No, that's useless. Why is ISRC useless? There are issues with it clashing as well because it's all meant to be totally unique and it's done on the track basis rather than the product, which is your release as well. So it, it depends what you're trying to match and it so also. The individual track itself rather than the release it's a part of. Yeah, and when you're, say, uh, trying to match things up, you generally don't have the ISRC code given to you as part of it all as well. Yeah, I mean, if you consider where we were trying to uh, match together sort of uses uh, in terms of download stores and things like that, so you, you just don't have this information there. So it's quite often you won't get it. What you do have is the artist and the title, okay? And so really, you do need to try and make that so that it is actually identifiable, you know? So actually keeping it sort of unique to a certain point, hey, make it an actual UID. Um, but um, yeah, so try and actually do things so that you do have something. I mean, yeah, some bits we found, like you know, an ampersand was an artist, and you just like oh my god so you know it's you know it's not it's just not going to work um and if you get clashes in some uh, way that some people do matching is they will actually drop those clashes out in total so you know, there's a whole batch there now that they just no like, no and so it's left there just just to say on that as well um again from a kind of label perspective uh talking um as in like trying to help the artists that you work with as well um, that even folds back into branding, that level of having uniqueness Correct, of people yeah. being able to find you. You spoke earlier on there about having um, like the search results come up and your socials being near the top. For instance, say you're called, I'm trying to think of someone that I don't know with a name, but say you're called Freeze or something like that. There's going to be hundreds of artists called Freeze or, or very close representations of. People aren't going to find you on Google results. People are very, they're going to struggle going through Spotify profiles, searching your name, and there's like 30 of them. So Especially that's if you've got a variated letter, like yeah. a, a different character language. Or, or if you spell the artist's name differently. I mean, this is Z, sounds silly. People do change the way that... And, 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 and so and many this, cases this, where Google goes, did you mean this? It'll probably, yeah. yeah. But this, this, is, this is the thing. I think that's something that's not even necessarily just um, close to... Um, the naming of tunes. I think that's down to naming of artists and the way you present yourself as a whole. Obviously, as you said, uh, we were talking about branding and how important that is and how much people buy into that. That's not just from a label perspective. That's from an artist perspective as well. People buy into the uniqueness of something. They associate themselves. They go, I, I want to be a part of this, what you're doing. And the easiest way to do that is to stand out, even if it's down to just changing something about your artist name and it being something that you being the top result, essentially. Yeah, I mean, you might think, yeah, I like that from an art perspective. It's cool. I'll go with that. But also do think, what is it for? And it is for people to find you. Um, I, I did a conference up in um, uh, London and there's a girl in the audience who um, she was asking, they're all asking sort of questions and, and she said that, you know, she's finding it, people literally finding her. It's a nightmare. And so I asked a few bits and anyway, her artist name, she'd done it as just two characters. And um, I said, well, you know, it's a whole load of reasons, but just to give you one of the sort of uh, an example is like databases, all right? Now, databases are search engines. That's what they are for matching and things like that. Databases, when they're doing like a search engine kind of matching, they have a two character minimum. So if you're, le if you're two or less, it's actually not going to return things, literally, because it will be returning everything. So you're stuffed. So make it bigger than two characters, please. <laughs> you know, it's because um, you're literally saving yourself. Makes it depressing, though, as an artist, isn't it? You could be an artist, you can pick an, but it's got to be more than three. What if you don't want to do, you know what I mean? It's, it's There's definitely of artists I've seen that have had like two letter names and I am sat there going, I have no idea how to, I could search you a thousand times and you're not going to be on, you're not going to be there. In conjunction with title, it kind of works sometimes, but it, I'm, not I'm always, intrigued to know, right, so what, what should we be doing then to make sure this is right? Because I'm, I've always thought, ISRCs and all that kind of stuff they is what's gonna what's gonna keep it there all rocking and rolling. There needs to be a unique framework, you know, coming out. Yeah. I know the PRS tried to um, do one as well, the Global Repertoire Database, but and there are, you know, there is not as easy as it sounds to do. But you can really help yourself because at the moment, the uniqueness and things to find you are in the artist and title, okay, um, and remix obviously on there. But um, uh, so try and keep them a little bit longer. Yeah, so not just tiny, tiny, and actually to try and, you know, keep them a bit unique. So when you're thinking, right, oh, I've got to quickly come up with a name for this, do actually try searching. If there's like a million things called the same thing, don't pick that. Google Translate is the best tip on the planet. 
Yeah, no, that's but for naming tunes, Google Translate is this. Do you know what I found? My five-year-old son's pretty good. <laughs> he comes out with real random stuff. And I'm dyslexic as well. Like, and I, I, I sometimes I go, how do I even communicate that artist name to someone? You know, I find that it, if I, I can't, I've, you know, I've, I've found that when you're promoting something's a radio, and if radio can't pronounce it, they're just like, oh, we're not going to support it. It's too much work. Try, try and think of it, and also make sure that you are copy and pasting things when you are doing documents. Don't type it because the number of errors that are getting introduced with people literally getting spellings wrong. If you can't spell the artist's name right, how's everyone else meant to? It's certainly not going to match anything, and you're just literally losing unknown amounts of uh, revenue. We spend a lot of time matching where, when obviously it gets delivered to stores, and their artist hasn't, uh, artist name hasn't connected to the their correct account, and then you've we got to spend have time to matching. Call it. it there, unfortunately. That's uh, uh, it. so. Um, yeah, do reach out though on the music mission if you have any other questions, and we'll endeavour to do the best we can. Well, certainly Della will. Uh, <laughs> she'll get bombarded by them. Okay, thank you very much, and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Take care. Thank you.